as we were saying, um, is, a, is a primary um, symptom. Depressive mode is a primary symptom of any psychiatric syndrome. You know, depressive mode is one of the key primary, you know, symptoms that you can't get away with that. So, we continue from page 128 of my book. And I read, Adjustment disorder with depressed mood. So, you see, every kind of psychiatric syndrome has got this major depressive mood as a, a, a primary symptom. So everything that we've mentioned here, there is depressive mode in it. So if you are going to follow it through carefully, you will understand what I'm trying to, 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 to explain here. Depressive mode is one of the primary, 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 primary symptoms of any psychiatry, psychiatry, psychiatry syndromes. So if you follow this through with all these repetitive words, you begin to understand and get some information to help others in the community. You see? So adjustment disorder with this depressive mood is a mood disturbance appearing as a psychological response to an identifiable event or stressor in which the resulting emotional or behavioral symptoms are significant but do not meet the criteria of a major depressive episode and post-traumatic stress disorder and anxiety disorder that sometimes follow trauma is commonly accompanied by depressive mood so you see we've mentioned bipolar we've mentioned personality borderline disorder we've mentioned post-traumatic stress disorder, it all have the same common denominator, common factor, which is what? The primary symptoms, which is called what? Depressive mood. All of these things have got depressive mood as a common factor. All the aforementioned disorders which I have mentioned, personality disorder commonly features depressive mood. Post-traumatic stress disorder commonly features depressive mood. All the other depressive episodes that I've mentioned features depressive mood. So if you are going to follow me up in this video series, you understand that depressive mood is one of the primary symptoms of every psychiatry syndromes or every disorder that is affected in terms of psychiatry or psychological effects. So let's go to the management of depression. Let's see what, what they say there. And it's on page 129. A depressed mood may not require any professional depression or any professional treatment sorry a prolonged depressed mood especially in combination with other symptoms may lead to a diagnosis of a psychiatric or medical condition by a counselor or a doctor which may benefit from treatment different subdivisions of depression have different treatment approaches so as i was saying and I've been saying it over and over again, a prolonged depressed mood, prolonged, excessive, resist, r r r r persistent, intrusive, lingers on for a number of years or for a number of months or six months, even with a depression, strong depressive mood for two weeks. These are some of the, the criteria to determine the diagnosis of that individual. So they are saying that the medical condition as the diagnosis of a psychiatric, it should be a prolonged because the, the, the ordinary sporadic ones that comes in and goes as depressive mode, load mode, is not going to warrant a diagnosis of depression or depressive or clinical depression. But a prolonged depressive mood, especially in combination with 
other symptoms may warrant what? A clinical diagnosis. So let's go to mania and see how it goes because it's a combination of fluctuation up and down. Mania. Mania is a state of abnormal or abnormally elevated or irritable mood, arousal or energy levels. In a sense, it is the opposite of depression. So you see, when it comes to the mania, that is when bipolar is diagnosed because that is when people get abnormal or abnormally elevated or irritable mood, arousal, your mood goes up. Some of them become sexually disinhibited. Some of them become man high, you know, dancing and, you know, doing things that ordinarily they wouldn't do or in their nature they wouldn't do. They tend to do things that are extraordinary. Sexual disinhibition is one of the key areas of symptoms that manic patients show. And some of them also become hyper, very high, you know, hypersensitive. Some are very hyper in activities. They do things, they've got extra energy that is quite the opposite of a low mood. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the mania. And mania is a necessary symptom for certain psychiatric diagnosis. The word derives from Greek, which is ovia, ovia, mania, ovia. It is derived from Greek, right? It means madness, frenzy, and that from the verb oauvi, which is menomea, right? To be mad to rage, to be furious. In addition to mood disorders, persons, one third, this page, one third, persons may, may exhibit manic behavior because of drug intoxication, notably stimulants set as cocaine and methamphetamine. Medication side effects, notably steroids and SSRI and malignancy. So this is whereby we talk about maybe overdose or intoxication of other drugs that are in the system, that are in your body. But apart from that, there are normal manic state that people go through that. They've got high energies. It's like manic frenzy, it's madness. They overdo things because they've got the extra energy to do it. And if it comes to maybe attacking staff, or attacking the community, people in the community. They've got the extra power, the extra energy, the extra strength to do that. So you need a number of people to restrain that particular person because they are in the manic state. But if they are opposite, if they are in the low mood, they don't behave like that. But when they get into that frenzy state, if they've got, or they get into that mad state, oh my God they go bunkers they have the extra energy to punch they have the extra energy to to um disassociate or to disentangle themselves from like six people on top of them if they are trying to restrain them so they've got the power and the energy and the strength to do it because they are in that manic state they are in that state that have got you know they've got a whole number of elevated abnormally elevated power in them so that is a very um serious situation but apart from that people can be intoxicated with methamphetamine and cocaine and all these drugs and some of the medication side effects can also kick in that they can be in that manic state that is there but we've got the natural manic state of the panic um the bipolar that will really take them to that state and you won't find it funny at all when they are in that state of mind. But mania is most often associated with bipolar disorder. That's what I've been preaching about. Bipolar disorder has got its primary symptoms. One of it is a depressive mood, as I always say on the other topics. And then one of it is the mania. 
whereby they've got abnormally elevated energy that you can't fathom, you can't understand. So, where the episodes of mania may alternate with episodes of major depression, so it's up and down as I'm saying. Manic state, depressive state, manic state, depressive state is a very dangerous and very unpredictable um, disorder. So Gelda, Mayo and Gates 2005 suggest that it is vital that mania be predicted in the early stages because otherwise the patient becomes reluctant to comply with the treatment. So this school of thought is saying that if it's not predicted in the early stage so that they become compliant with their medication and they wait till it's too late when the manic phase kicks in, it's going to be difficult to medicate that person because sometimes you have to give them tranquilizers that will, you know, um, sort of reduce their strength and something like hypnotics or anxiolytics that is going to put them to sleep a little bit so that they can regain their consciousness in terms of their manic state. So this school of thought is saying that the earlier you medicate that individual when they are diagnosed, the better, because you don't want to wait till they get to that manifest. But when the disease, when somebody is diagnosed with that disease, sometimes the medication works, sometimes it doesn't. When it comes to the manic state, they demonstrate it anyway, with or without the medication. Some of them to respond to treatment and they are able to um, live a happily life and they don't really exhibit that manic trait. And even when they are manic, it's not that effective as those that were not put on medication on time when they were diagnosed. Because, you know, they've given the patient the, um, the mandate, the authority, because they are their own boss, patient-centered healthcare that we're in. So you make sure that you don't um, go beyond your treatment or you can't force any patient to have any treatment. They have to decide for themselves.